those of you who don't know where the heck you are, um, I'm Kay Tempest, Brad Kay Tempest Bradford. Um, thank you for coming, especially so early in the morning, um, especially after staying up until 2.30 in the morning last night. Uh, the story that I'm going to read is called The Birth of Pegasus, um, and is unpublished, so you are hearing it first time ever, world exclusive, mm -hmm. and uh, Miss Robinette Kowal has agreed to help me out with this. Medusa, reflected in the mirror. Bronze walls, mirrors. In her temple by the sea. The sea, a reflection of the sky. Jealousy causes wrinkles, you know. Athena wrinkled her nose in distaste, then smoothed it out again. I'm hardly jealous of you. Medusa shrugged, then lowered herself into the warm water, letting it lap at her neck gently. So you say and yet you're still here coveting what isn't yours. Athena never submerged in water, never even allowed herself to get wet. She stayed always the same, as perfect and loving as stone. This temple, by all rights, belongs to me. My city's influence extends all the way to the sea, and everything from here to the Acropolis is now my domain. Medusa's laugh hit her like water slapping the side of a boat. It made Athena's nose and eyes crease again, despite herself. Land and war and acquisition are your domain, my little love. But this is the temple of the beginning and the end, of life and death and rebirth, all far above your head. Medusa flipped water playfully. Athena deflected it, her frown slowly forming into a smirk. The old ways are dying. Only the most isolated backwards people still garland rotting horses' heads and look for you to pull spring up from the depths. Their ways will wither and disappear, and so will you. Medusa gazed up at her daughter, then smiled the smile Athena hated most, patronizing yet reserved, a smile that said she knew some secret, some wisdom the younger goddess did not. Athena would not give in to that smile. I advise you to leave peacefully before I decide to force you out. This temple will be mine. She turned, and a whisper of wind was gone. As you wish, daughter, as you wish. Medusa, galloping through my dreams. Black coat shining in the dark. Opening the gates, I fall in. Perseus cannot sleep again. He sits awake in the night, listening for the sound of hooves, looking for her mane in the moonlight. She haunts him, hunts him in dreams, has haunted him since the spring. A beast. What? A beast, you know. He blinks. She's a beast, you know. Athena is there, suddenly, and crouches down to look Perseus full in the face. His eyes, wide, reflective, do not hold fear. She decides. Yes, he is the one. Medusa, watching the sky, standing above the water. Medusa, tangled mane, galloping to the edge of the world. Medusa, Wings spread, gliding over the sea. Medusa, contemplating her reflection. Poseidon washed onto the beach around Medusa's thighs, his water cold but still inviting. The days grow shorter, my love. Soon they would part again while she sojourned under the earth and rain spattered the world above. Then we should take advantage of what time we have left. She walked into him, her long, raven-hued hair fanning out, fanning out into a semicircle as she allowed him to overcome her again and again and again. Doesn't it bother you that I am her daughter, but you are not my father? The ocean laughed soundlessly near Athena's feet. I've heard you claim not to have a mother, born right from my brother's forehead, so the bards sing. Poseidon's eyes, now green, now blue, gazed at her from the depths. That is just a story. She bent down, one knee touching the sand, her voice a whisper. But does contain a truth. She couldn't give birth to me somewhere you might see. The water roiled angrily for just a moment, then subsided, pulling back with the tide. Athena rose, now with a smile of her own. In my dreams, Black raven wings come to draw me down from the sky. 
I can help you, she says. You will find her and kill her and never dream of her again. But how, Perseus asks. She's uh, a monster, nothing more. A monster that can die. Black Medusa, galloping along the shore, trying to outrun the ocean. Waves crashed into rocks, launching spears of mist through the air. For once, don't go. Poseidon wavers between begging and commanding. I have to. Medusa never wavers. Then don't return. No roar can match that of the sea. Don't say things you don't mean. She stood fast against the sea and spray and salt reaching into every part of her. Then suddenly it stopped. Poseidon taking form on the beach, arms aching to envelop her again. What grows inside you is mine? Medusa caressed his wet cheeks. What grows inside me is mine. Sing, O oh muse, of the wrath of Poseidon, of the water and waves, of the wind and roars, of the surf like steeds rearing up like towers, of the wall of water with the eyes of the sea. Sing, O oh muse, of the temple now gone, of the stone and bronze violated by the sea. Sing, O oh muse, of the horse that runs, of the raven that flies, over cliffs, over hills, of the white and blue sweeping sand and stone, up the cliffs, up the hills, to the cave beyond the sea. Sing, O oh muse, of the grief of Poseidon, of regrets, of laments, of the sorrow of the sea. The leaves are changing. They fall on Perseus' head as he rides into the forest, heading to the cave. The harvest has been made. Everywhere things are dying. Nothing left now but to wait for the cold. He rides through a village on a white horse, the gate slow to take more time. He passes through a market at dusk. There, on a fountain, lies the head of a black horse, garlanded and revered. Three ravens stand watch over it, never touching, pecking, or devouring, looking at him with reflective eyes. Perseus rides on. Medusa, reflected in the mirror, silver walls, mirrors, in her cave beyond the sea, her cave a reflection of death. Whispers slither through the streets of Athens. A beast, a beast, you know. In that forest, in the cave, there's a beast, you know. Branches of the story extend all the way to the flooded seaside villages. Houses now driftwood, worshippers now bitter. The tales tell of eyes like fire, nails like talons, teeth like fangs, hair like snakes. They scare children into mother's arms and prompt boats that die like cut flowers. Some turn their boats to action because great songs are sung of the brave but they are not so brave upon reaching the cave. One glimpse of shadow, a hint of reflection, they stand petrified, unable to move or think or breathe, frozen like stone, yet not as alive. No matter that they had seen nothing, fallen to no curse, the stories had been enough. Medusa waits for the one who is truly brave, dancing, living, eating among the forest of stone. There is no growing, no rebirth, no renewal. She is in limbo, between here and there, yet not anywhere. The sea laps at the cliffs, the fields, the village, the forest, every day creeping its way to the cave, a deluge. It calls for her in the day, in the night, but she will not come. Instead, Medusa waits. Where is he? The cave walls glitter, no substitute for the sun. In the darkness I hear the sea, like a thousand hooves chasing me, her face close to mine, breathing me in. I see my eyes in her eyes, her mouth on my mouth. She draws me closer. I see the sea in her eyes, the rocks. She is waiting for me on the rocks by the sea, waiting to draw me down from the sky. A shield, bronze reflective. If you look into her eyes, you will turn to stone. A sword, bronze, reflective. Cut off her head, keep it in a bag. Gently, 
reverently, Athena places the gifts in his hands. Even in death, she is dangerous. Perseus stands at the mouth of the cave. The forest of brown has given way to a forest of gray. The terrified faces are still, hard, their complexion stone. Water from the sea laps at their feet, and hard blue-green eyes waver on the surface. Be brave, Athena says. You're a hero. He could not feel less a hero. Medusa looks at herself in the mirror. She resembles the world, old, dying, flooded, tired. It would be easy to slip away, to go down deep into the cave and remain unrenewed forever, but she will not. In one breath, she revives herself one last time. Young again, beautiful again, Medusa waits. The cave walls glitter, silvery, reflective. Perseus moves cautiously from stone to stone, deeper and deeper, closer to the darkness. In the walls, he spies a reflection, movement, his sword, now trembling, is held high. Before he can strike, before he can close his eyes, she is there. No snakes, no claws, no monster. It is a beauty that stands before him. He is too petrified to move. I've been waiting for you. Medusa comes to him, caresses his cheeks, feels him trembling, and now you are here. You are a beast, a beast, you know. I'm not a beast, you know. He sees his eyes in her eyes, feels her mouth on his mouth. In the shield, he sees snakes and claws and ugliness. Is that her face or his? He drops the sword arm to his side. I am no hero. Medusa caresses his cheeks. You are my hero. She and the world begin to decay. The old ways are dying but we die to be reborn. It takes a hero to know when to end one story and begin the next. She lifts his sword to her neck. Will they sing songs of you, Perseus? He sees his future reflected in her eyes, quests and deeds and stories half truth, half legend, a maiden chained to rock, a vengeful sea claiming his sacrifice, and no one to stand between them except him. And so much more beyond that than an eternity among the stars. Find me again by the sea. Her voice fades and is gone. Perseus draws back the sword and swings. The birth of Pegasus was the birth of poetry, I'm told. Cut off a gorgon's head, and there it is, spilling down your sword. Poems. Pegasus leaps from the spray of blood at her mother's neck, landing unsteadily in the world as Medusa's body falls and melts into the earth. Perseus still holds her head, too beautiful and too sacred to gaze upon. The winged horse's eyes are blue and deep, as tumultuous as the sea. He sees himself reflected in them before she turns and gallops down into the darkness. He wanders back out to the forest, cradling the head in his arms. Under a tree with no leaves, he sits and waits. Pegasus, climbing to the sky, longing for the sea, galloping back to the world. Pegasus, escaping death, bringing life, drawing it from the darkness in waves. Pegasus, gliding between air and sea, contemplating her reflection. Athena arrives just as the leaves begin to grow again. The look in Perseus's eyes keeps her at a distance, even though he doesn't have the, have the power to challenge a god, yet. He stands and approaches, still wearing his blood-crusted clothes. Gently, reverently, he places Medusa's head in her hands. She's not a beast, he says, before walking away. When he is gone, Athena can finally look into her mother's eyes. With one hand, she closes them and whispers, I know. Thank you. Thank you.